Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome. So let's get into it. So first of all, I want to point out that this is a very rare syndrome, okay, it is not common. But it is very important because it's life-threatening if your patient does have it. So it's a life-threatening reaction to antipsychotic medications. It is caused by a dopamine receptor blockade. And before we talk about risk factors, I do want to point out, even though when you think neuroleptic malignant syndrome, you're going to think antipsychotics right away, those are not the only types of meds that can cause this. So that's why I put this down here in the little box. So if you are a patient who has Parkinson's medications, okay, which are very common, if you were to decrease those medications very quickly, you could potentially get this syndrome. And then other very common meds, Reglan and Compazine, these are anti-anemics, these are used for nausea and vomiting. They work by also blocking dopamine. So potentially they could cause this as well. So when you think about this, I want you to think automatically antipsychotics, but don't forget about other meds that could potentially cause this as well. So the risk factors. Risk factors include things like dehydration, which can lead to hyponatremia, so low amounts of salt in the body, malnutrition or alcohol use. Anybody on an antipsychotic should absolutely not be using alcohol with that medication. Being male and less than 40 years old. Having a history of dementia or a current delirious episode, delirium. The higher the dose of the med, the higher your risk. And that kind of makes sense, right? Um, because we know it's a problem with the med. It's a reaction to the med. So more med, more likely to have the reaction. If you are getting it in an IM form, so an injectable form, instead of taking it orally, that's a higher risk. And if you recently have increased your dosage or changed your antipsychotic medication, that is also a risk factor. When it comes to signs and symptoms, we can remember this mnemonic device. So F is for fever. This is going to be one of the big signs. So when dopamine is blocked, it causes increased temperature, it causes blood pressure instability, and it causes muscle rigidity. These are going to be our big signs of this syndrome. So F is for fever. High fever, dangerous high fever. A is for altered mental status. L is for leukocytosis or low blood pressure. So this can cause both low and elevated blood pressure because it causes blood pressure instability. T stands for tremors or tachycardia. E is for elevated blood pressure and elevated CPK, which as we know kind of shows damage to muscles, showing that there's a problem with the muscles. And then of course R is that muscle rigidity. And when do these sort of symptoms start? About two weeks. So two weeks after the patient starts taking these medications is when these symptoms are gonna show up. Or if they've already been on the medication and they increase the dose, in about two weeks after that increase is when these symptoms will start to show up. So how is this diagnosed? typically off of the symptoms, right? The high fever and the muscle stiffness. And they're going to do a medication history since this is a reaction to medication, knowing what medications you're on. So that's going to be the big way they diagnose this. They might want to do other things. They might want to get some blood or urine, but that's not to diagnose this. It's to rule out other potential causes. So the big things are going to be your signs and symptoms and your medications. When it comes to treatment, we got to go after the cause. If the cause is the antipsychotic medication, we're going to stop that medication, right? Um, they have this high, high fever. We need to do interventions to get that temp down. And this could be cooling blankets. It could be ice packs and ice collars. It could be antipyretic medications, right? No matter what, we got to get that fever down. That's the goal. IV fluids, because likely they are going to be dehydrated. So we need to aggressively hydrate them. And then sometimes we might even give other meds like dantrolene to help with the muscle rigidity. So our treatment is going to be focusing on the cause and then treating the symptoms. 
And then after a while, after a couple weeks, once the patient starts to do better, they might consider putting them back on the med and then doing it slowly, of course. One other thing I wanted to point out, you might have noticed a lot of similarities between this syndrome and malignant hyperthermia, right? They're very similar in the way that they present. Knowing the difference though is very important. So this is caused by antipsychotic medications. It is a reaction to that. Whereas malignant hyperthermia is typically a genetic disorder that is caused by exposure to anesthesia. So, both have similar symptoms, both have similar treatments, uh, but they are not the same, and I did want to point that out so nobody got confused. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.